Now you're also going to want to go into your Windows settings by holding Windows R and typing in the phrase Control Space Mouse. And this is gonna bring up your mouse settings. Now you'll see, usually it'll say buttons. Just go over to Pointer Options and where it says Motion, make sure that's set to the sixth item. There should be 11 there. So it's gonna be like right dead in the center, five on either side. Again, this is just so that we're using your hardware as opposed to your software. So now that we've done all of that, there's a few things we want to understand about DPI. Now DPI is definitely relative to the resolution that you're using. So I'm going to assume, you know, about a 1080 resolution. Basically DPI, if you're set to 800, which is what most pros will play on, if you move your mouse a certain amount of inches, I think it's like 2.4, uh, it should move 800 pixels. And keeping these software elements makes it so that there's no overflow, which basically just means you're skipping a couple of pixels every now and then um, just because of like uneven division. It, it's really complicated math, but basically hardware is better than software. And the lower your DPI slash CPI, the more precise your mouse is actually going to be. The reason for this is that you have to move the mouse more to get it to move on the screen. This means, of course, you're going to be working harder. That's why pros play with such huge mouse pads. It's why you see players sweating in the intense moments of a game. But it also means you're going to be more precise and more able to click on the things you want to. When you first start playing with a lower DPI, it feels like moving your hand with like moving a brick in your hand. It just, it's not very pretty. It takes some getting used to. And there are ways that you can improve how you get used to that. So the thing I would say do is lower your DPI setting as much as you can tolerate, usually two to 500, um, depending on what your setting is, is a good place to start just lowering whatever it is by that amount. But if you feel like trying, go ahead and set it to 800 DPI. And you can try going straight in and playing StarCraft, although you'll probably lose because it's a setting you're not used to. Another option you could do is go to aimbooster.com. Once you hit aimbooster.com, you're gonna see a screen like this. And of course, training sounds like what you'd want, but actually I recommend challenge. And as you can see, you know, 17 seconds, I did okay. This will help you adjust to the lower DPI setting. Goku, this thing weighs a ton. Have you been wearing it for the entire tournament? Yep, Kami told me to. It was part of my training. Now, if you play this five, ten times, um, or even less than that, before you actually play your first game of StarCraft for the day, you're going to notice a huge world of difference in your gameplay and in your mouse accuracy. And if you're simultaneously doing this while lowering your DPI to at most 800, but I actually play on 500, you're going to be in an even better position. Now, some mice actually come with acceleration settings. Make sure these are turned off. Pulling rate, 500 is usually good, 1000 is not that accurate, so 500 is really where you want it to be. Now, some mice have sensitivity stages. Currently, I have mine set up with three stages. 1000 is kind of what I'm doing if I'm playing like um, Civilization VI or something like that, and I just, you know, accuracy is just not that important. 750 is. Well, it's kind of where I was at when I first started trying to lower my DPI setting, but it's really close to that 800 and it's close enough to where pros play on that. That's kind of like a baseline. I'm trying to get used to this 500. That's why I didn't maybe do so good in the aim booster because I'm trying to lower my DPI even further. I want to buy a bigger mouse pad and you know, I like the, the intensity of games where I'm working my mouse hand a lot harder. It also makes me a lot more accurate and increases my APM drastically. So if these are things you want to focus on, this is a good way of doing it. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hopefully these settings will make your StarCraft experience that much more enjoyable. A lot of the other settings in the menu just are really personal preference, how loud you have your sound. I actually like, you know, the uh, StarCraft Brood War music over the StarCraft 2 music. You can actually choose to play both. There's all kinds of options in there. It's worth exploring. But these are the items that I think every 
new player should be aware of and be working to experiment with and will help your game progress even further. Making sure your mouse is properly configured is going to be huge when we get to unit control in, in particular things like boxing, splitting units, and even getting the perfect concave. So these are the settings you want to make sure you have perfect before we get into more complicated items. The next video we do should be on boxing or hotkeys, depending on if I can get a certain Grandmaster player to sit down with me and uh, let's do some boxing drills to help you guys see how the professionals get it done. So we'll either have that video coming out next if I can get him here sooner, or we'll have a discussion on things like the core or the grid setup in uh, StarCraft II's default settings and how each of these can help influence your gameplay. By the way, I do want to apologize about the uh, bad green screening a little bit. Um, my lighting's not quite right in this video. I need to buy some bulbs, but they don't sell them at the Walmart near me and it requires a little bit of travel. So I might just order those online. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this content, make sure you smash that subscribe button. If you want to help support our future projects, please become a patron, link in the description. and. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Chatelet, my dudes. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.